quarterfinals. Still super awesome. Budakov's opponent this time in the quarterfinals is Igor Gorbanov. Now, what uh, decks are these two uh, players playing today? So, Dimitri is playing his uh, Bent deck, Bent control deck. That's, uh, <laughs> that's his take on the control control uh they come the format sure we've seen the uh, we've the seen Sphinx's revelation and uh, and supreme verdict going look, doing a lot of work throughout the last uh, months in the standard uh, in the standard metagame so blue white with the addition of uh, a few green spells including cura the crashing wave of course yeah and he's facing off against uh, igor gorbanov who seems to, as you can as uh, his opening hand will attest is on red white burn red white burn which uh, got a huge boost from the last set from uh, uh, Eidolon of the from Great Journey, Revel, of course. From Journey into Nyx. We, yeah, with the addition Eidolon of the Great Revel and, and of course, Mana, Mana Confluence. It's a key card. So we're going to see what, the, what role the, those two cards play as we get stuck in to the quarterfinals here. Both players uh, opening up with a couple of lands and there's a young Pyromancer on the side of the Red White Burn player. Now, of course, the Red White Burn deck has a range of options at the two drop slot. You've got Ash Sellet, you've got Young Pyromancer, you've got Eidolon of the Great Revel. He's, got, uh, he's going with uh, Young Pyromancers. What do you think of that as a, as a choice for the two drop? I think, I think it's a perfectly fine choice considering you're playing mostly uh, spells in your deck. It's definitely nice to get a little bit of extra value off, uh, off uh, all of the spells that you play. So here's a Kiora. I think a very sensible uh, activation of her second ability there, knowing she's probably not going to last on the battlefield for very long, considering the huge amount of burn spells that Gorbanov has at his disposal. Now, Igor has a, has a choice to make. Is he uh, killing Kiora or is he... Uh Is he going to go upstairs to the face? We'll find that out very shortly as he scries a, what looked like a actually, land actually, to the bottom and yeah, a, one uh, and a, and a and generous a, phoenix. And a phoenix to the top. Was it to the, uh, to the face? Oh. or uh, I think it was probably... Uh, it seems to have been to the yeah, face because the, the Kiora yeah. is there. And, oh, there's a shock. Okay, so there's a shock to the Kiora taking care of business there off that mana confluence. So Igor Gorbanov uh, uh, dishing cards out of yeah, his hand. You seem confused by that yeah, play, that right? Yeah, doesn't that doesn't seem right. I mean, he's drawing a phoenix up the of the top, right? Mm. So why isn't he keeping the? Why isn't he keeping the shock? They're attacking Kira with the phoenix and keeping the shock in hand. It would be the exact same situation, except that he would still be holding the and shock he's still just up in case. Card. Yeah, that's right. Like he still has a as a land on tap. I mean, sure, he has four mat, four lands in play, so it's not gonna. It's not going to matter too much, especially since it takes one to cast it. Four is the magic number for the red-white burn deck. I know that uh, after hitting four lands, often uh, any, any extra ones are, are a bit of a liability, with most of the cards uh, in the deck costing two. And another, look at the Psychotog. So there we go, on, the, on top of the, uh, the deck with that Azorius charm. Uh, and the, the Electrified Psychotog is... Uh, on the shock, oh, the shock. Yeah, yeah, on the shock. There we go. So there's an Elspeth Suns champion, the Haymaker, brutal six mana spell here. With, that's actually, uh, that's actually a good cut for Igor because he's now able to play his uh, Searing Blood. That's exactly right. It's, it has actually given uh, given uh, Igor, Igor Gorbanov a, uh, a chance to uh, target the otherwise dead removal spell in his yeah. hand in Searing Blood. Searing Blood dealing, dealing two so damage seven, to a creature and seven to the face to its controller. I think seven to the face is good here. Sent to the face, he's gonna be down to nine. Attack with Phoenix, he's gonna be down to seven. He has six damage left in his hand. In a, uh, so I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's his play here. In a commanding position, uh, according well, to you, Raph Levy. Oh, I'm not saying commanding position. In a in a position where he has to go for the he has to go for the for for the kill here. 
Okay. I mean, he's not. If he wants to kill Elspeth, that's uh, that's an uphill battle. He's gonna. He's gonna. F yeah, so that's what he's. That's okay. what he's going for. So uh, uh, the line End of that you turn, predicted. Uh, also, also Boris Charm to the face. And there it is, a Boris, Boris Charm to the face, face as well. Ralph Levy, able to see several seconds into the future, a, a, a very useful yeah. superpower when it comes to games of magic. A Levy Seer, that, that's my card. Ah, the Levy Seer, yes yeah. indeed. Okay, so there is the Chandra's Phoenix. That's going to fly across so for another seven, two points of damage. With six damage, six direct damage in hand. With a War Leader's Helix and a Shock in hand for Igor Gorbanov, we have... And a Phoenix your, in play. And a Phoenix in play, let's not forget that, of course. Uh, with, with Budakov to your left, he's going to play a Jace... Architect that's, of Thought. That's not good enough. Jace is only gaining one. Oh, he's taking two from something? No, no, two, two was from the... From the Phoenix, that's yeah, right. Okay. So, no, he's, uh, he's going he's gonna to activate the Fact or Fiction-like uh, effect here. We see Akura, the Crashing Wave, and Elspeth, and a third card. The Mysterious we, card. Which we can't quite and see at this he point. he kept... A Sphinx. Sphinx's Revelation, we're told, is the third card. So, a split here to uh, on the part of Gorbanov to make. And... Uh, Budokov snaps up the Sphinx's Revelation into his hand. They're is not, he going to get a chance to cast it? There are not a lot of cards that actually save him here. There would be a Syncopate or a Nazorius Charm. These are the two cards that actually uh, that would actually be relevant here. End of turn, Shock you. There's the Shock upstairs. Another two points off his life total. So he's down to five now. Budokov with his back against the wall, it must be said. Like if he, uh, yeah. Like he needs his counter or a uh, it's a mountain. Attack for a... So it goes to three now with the attack from the 2-2 two, two yeah, flyer. No, Is he just no going to snap off the wall at his yeah, now? No yep, there it goes upstairs. And yeah, that'll game. do it for game number one. Igor Gorbanov taking out game one in no uncertain terms. The red-white burn deck proving that it does have what it takes to, ta to, uh, to slog with the big dogs at the top of the format. So we do have access to the deck lists here. We're going to have a quick look at the sideboards. Yeah, um, I'm interested in... Uh, they're available to these two players. And the sideboards here. So let's see what uh, Jimmy Choo is running in sideboard. Oh, yeah. Nix Fleece Ram. Nix Fleece Ram. And yeah, I was, ex I was expecting... I was about to call it, but... Uh, you would have sounded so clever. Yeah, but then... Uh, then Rich did before that. So, so we, we, we hear the, the Ram... We I don't, do what's the word in English for that? A bleating. We do have the Nix Fleece Ram that I assume will, is definitely coming in from yeah. Dmitry Budakov's uh, sideboard. He also has access Rima to Brima's King of Oreskos, Dispel, Unravel the Aether, Miscut a Hydra, Negate, and a further Jace Memory Adept. Do you think the Nix Fleece Ram would be the key card here? We have seen uh, Dmitry play this matchup in the tournament already. And we've seen him play with uh, Nix Fleece, Fleece uh, Ram. So we'll see exactly what, uh, what's on the agenda when it comes to these sideboard plans. But for now, we're moving over to Shi Chan Lee, ranked, oh, sorry, Lee Shi Chan. He's ranked number 16 in the world at the moment, uh, along with Sergei Sushalski, who's sitting to the right of your screen. An uphill battle for Lee Shi Chan to find his way into the top eight, Rafael Levy. He's managed to do it, and he's facing off against, uh, against the Ukrainian Shusalski. Mono Black Devotion on the left versus Jun Monsters on the right. So is that actually turn four? Oh, he's, as he missed the Lendra. It's probably not turn four because like, this is the second Pelucranos. I can't say for certain. It's, it seems no, there are two Pelucranos and, uh, and a Stormless Dragon. Dragon. He cannot be turn four. So both players may be missing a land drop or two here as, uh, as the quarterfinals get underway for these two. It's probably turn six. Oh yeah, he he need, he wants uh. So that to that's, that's uh, a very nice pack red token. That, that's a, uh, an exceedingly uh, an exceedingly. Uh, I like I like the pack red token. Yeah, yeah, it's so there we go. So we do have two pack rats, one uh, one card, one copy, on the side of Lee Shi Chan, uh, against Sergei Shusalski, who, living up to the deck's name, has summoned at least two. Uh, enormous big monsters. We have a Storm Breath Dragon and a Pelucranos World Eater at the moment. Lishi Chan hitting the tank. He's had, as I said, he's had a rough, he's had a rough road to the top eight. He had, uh, after picking up three buys, of course, he managed to lose his first two rounds. Raf Levy. Yeah, and then, uh, then had the, uh, how do you say that, a wavy. 
a, 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 a definitely a controversial, controversial or a, uh, last or an round unfortunate win. Uh, entrance into day number two with a. But uh, he managed to 5-0 his way into top, into top eight. He has and a draw. He hasn't come to muck around. He's not come to make friends. GP Moscow here, and his phone he is hasn't he's lost found a match his way. Today into the top eight. So well done indeed to Li Shi Chan, showing indeed what it takes to be in the coveted ranks, the exalted ranks of the Magic top 25 players here. Sitting at number 16, not such a bad spot for him. This game, however, will determine an enormous amount moving forward to see how his GP campaign ends up going. Thinking about an attack here, it seems. Deep, deep, deep in the tank, considering his options. We see a pair of Grey Merchants. Grey Merchants often pretty powerful in multiples, Raph. But now he's facing Pelucranos and Stormverse Dragon. He doesn't have a way to interact with them directly. No hero's downfall. Uh, well, no nothing. They're yeah. just playing creatures and the monstrous creatures are pretty huge here. We do have an update now. We have the Dutchman flying in. It is Dr. Frank Carsten, the Flying Dutchman. Frank coming with some results from the other matches. Frank, what have you got for us? Well, just one uh, very quick result. Karen Chetty is down a game against uh, Alexei Rogov. So Karen Chetty is the South African who's on Black Red Devotion playing against Alexei Ro Rogov, the Russian on Jund Monsters. Exactly. Yeah, Rogov uh, had Polukunos and Scavenging Us in play, pressuring uh, Karan's life total, while Karan was trying desperately to hit anything off the top of uh, Alexei's deck with Nightfall Spectre but didn't get anything relevant. Unfortunately so. for the South African, he's down a game in the quarterfinals. We'll see how that match pans out. Thanks very much for the update, Dr. Frank Carsten, as we turn our attention once again back to the match featuring the, uh, the Hong Kongese, Hong Kongese, I'm not sure of their demonym, I've embarrassed myself already, Li Shi Chan facing off against the Ukrainian Sergei Shusalski. And it still seems to be a uh, a pretty slow match here. They're taking. They're certainly taking. Well, they're their time taking in their time, their but it's definitely not a slow, like a slow-paced game. I mean, they have like a, already a lot of big guys on the board. Sure. You can see. Uh, if you don't know uh, what uh, Sergey uh, did in the past, he's showing you wearing his. Uh, Pro Tour, a Born of the Gods shirt. Yes, and just in case you were wondering exactly what caliber of player you're, you're up against here, he has indeed attended a Pro Tour. So, we had a second rat token into the battlefield thanks to that discarded Underworld Connections. Opting not to play the Underworld Connections, what do you think of that? A Underworld Connection would, uh, would, be, uh, would be pretty slow here. An extra two points of devotion for the, uh, for the Grey Merchants, which but is... He's facing, he's facing way too much damage here. Sure. So it looks like that rat token is on chump blocking duty against Pelucranos, the World Eater. Or is it a double block, in fact? So let's see, how, how would that work out? So he can pump it for two, make it a 7-7 seven, seven against two potentially 4-4 four, four guys. 4-4s, four, thanks to so the activation of Mutavolt. So we will trade his Pelucranos for two rats. If Mutavolt is activated, of course, that will end up uh, pumping the other rats, and he can activate the Mutavolt with the swamp that you see there. Um, I however, can just trade for one. Like one for one, or activate Pelucranus and kill another one. Yeah. I think the question here is, does he want to uh, tap out this turn to kill another rat token? The contents of his hand aren't... In aren't uh, think, altogether clear to us. I think yet. it's Xenagos, and I'm not sure about the two other, two other cards. But at least Chan's hand, we can uh, rather handily see that he's got two Grey Merchants, a Pack Rat, and a Night Vale Spectre. Pro Tour Born of the Gods, Valencia. He was there. He was there? He was there. So he was there. Li Shichian was there too. Just in, in case. So we're going to head back to Budakov while that game is sorted out. They're certainly uh, taking their time in making their play. So let's head back now to the land of Band Control versus Red White Burn. We've, we can see some uh, rather distasteful, it must be said, uh, white-bordered islands. I do apologize about that. A syncopate taking care of an Eidolon of the Great Revel. So a diversified two-drop suite here in the Red White Burn deck from Igor Gorbanov. Right from uh, Odyssey. 
syncopate. Yes, uh, a, a redeeming himself somewhat in playing a, 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 a very a nice syncopate. Here comes the three drop. It is Chantress Phoenix, a hallmark of this red white burn deck. That's going to come across for two, uh, the hasty flyer, but it's going to be put right back on top of his library. No thank you, says uh, Budakov. You're going to draw that next turn. I enjoy doing so, as indeed here comes the Phoenix back into his hand. A sacred foundry also in his hand, along with the Temple of Triumph. You'd imagine that might be seeing uh, hitting the battlefield this turn. Phoenix That's decking. Come across for two. So the 18 apiece, by the look of things, or it might be 16, 18. I'm not quite sure. And Boris and Charm. Boris Charm on the top. So there we go. And as Steve. we see Stephen Leeming going above and beyond to make sure that you, the viewer at home, our revered viewers, are making sure you can see exactly what's going on in this game. So here we go. We have four lands and a Chandra's Phoenix for Gorbanov and four lands and very little else for uh, Dmitry Butikov. No, no double white and no uh, green mana. So there's the Sphinx of Revelation main phase. He's chosen to play, uh, play that main phase, probably playing around Skullcrack now. Yeah. We have another result here from the Flying Dutchman, uh, Dr. Frank Karsten. What have you got for us, Frank? Well, for all the fans of uh, Efim Kashapov and his uh, beautiful four-color uh, mid-range deck, unfortunately, he lost game one to uh, Sergei Zeleznov and an array of uh, pack rats. He was, uh, like Efim was drawing cards with Underworld connections, but was just not able to uh, assemble everything in time before dying to an army of rats. So. so. Uh, so Kashapov going down in uh, in the first game, unfortunately for him. Yes. But of course, still two, uh, still at least one more game to go. So we'll get further updates from Dr. Frank Carsten as they come to the fore. In the meanwhile, thanks so much for that, Frank. In the meanwhile, back to our game here between Budakov and Gorbanov. We see the Cat King himself, the Lion King, into the battlefield. It is Brimaz, King of Oreskos, uh, facing off against a uh, an increasingly oh, wow. growing number of uh, of permanents on the side of Gorbanov. He's got a uh, young pyromancer in addition to a Chandra's Phoenix. So it's, uh, it's an unconventional strategy to put in a lot of counter spells against uh, red decks. As we saw, yes, a Banishing Light get negated. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, that was, that was definitely key here because without, without the uh, negate, that, was the, that game would have been a lot, a lot harder. So here's a, uh, here's a Detention Sphere, a pretty handy answer, it must be said to the Chandra's Phoenix and uh, a lot of uh, red white decks running the split card wear tear in the sideboard. Igor Gorbunov not counting himself amongst the ranks of people doing that. I don't think there'll be uh, any way to remove that uh, detention sphere outside of Banishing Light. In comes the Lion King, Brumaz, King of Oreskos, summoning another one of his followers. So two 1-1 one, one tokens there, both with vigilance of course. Brimaz really showcasing his capacity to stabilize a board, especially against a down. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's mind. enough there. Cutting me off mid-sentence. Gorbanov has had enough. He he oh, shakes his hand in disgust went, and says, no. Akuna Matata, man. <laughs> you know what? That let's, is, let's, let's play another game. Let's just move on because the Sphinx Revelation is not something I'm interested in fighting against. So, no, there you go. Uh, Dmitry Budakov on the back of the powerful instant from Return to Ravnica has taken the second game. So tied at one apiece, the two Russians going head to head here. Dmitry Budakov, of course, straight out of Magic Online and making, making waves here at GP Moscow in paper. So we've got an update from the other, from the other game we were peeking in on before. Li Shi Chan has succumbed to Sergei Shuchalsky so far in the first game. They are one and zero oh in favor of the Ukrainian are we going to go and have a look at them right now? We are not, because they are shuffling up and just the same as our heroes right in front of us as well. So, in the meantime, I want to talk about the sideboard options available here. So, Igor, I saw Igor board in uh, the three Toil and Trouble. That's right. A Toil and Trouble, of course, another split card that doesn't see a lot of play, but it can be absolutely devastating against the control player. Be yeah, because you don't, want, you don't see it uh, played at least in the main deck, because it's a card you want to have on the play. You don't want to be on the draw, like having your opponent with one less card on turn three, you're gonna play it, but he's probably like down to four cards already. That's right. And you, you lose your turn three that you really don't want to do stuff on of that Of course, on that the turn. trouble side of this yeah. card, doing damage to target player equal to the number of cards in his or her hand, and definitely a card that you're wanting to, uh, definitely a card you're wanting to time very carefully. The Flying Dutchman has joined us once again. Frank. Flying in with an update. Well, 
I have been watching the match of Igor Gorbunov and his John Monsters deck against Li Shi Tian, number 16 in our uh, top 25 rankings, and his mono black deck. It was a close damage race where Li had a bunch of pack rats, but Igor rammed quickly into uh, a bunch of monsters like Polychronos and Stormbad Dragon. In the end, after uh, the dust settled and the mats worked out, it was Igor who took game one. So Igor Gorbunov uh, Sergei, up. Sergei. Uh, Sergei, so Sergei Suchelsky, in fact, it, it was his one game up against Li Shi Chan, as we were as we were just mentioning before. So the detail from you are correct, my from bad. The doctor, well, here he is. Lee is uh, down a game, let's uh, say. Like so there that. we go. Yeah. So the uh, the number 16 down a game against the Ukrainian with his Jun monsters. We'll see how that uh, pans out in the future. Thanks so much for that update, Frank. As we uh, as we see now, Dmitry Budakov and Igor Gorbanov with his red white burn deck, they're going toe to toe. So we do see in his opening hand that looks to me to be a glare of heresy. Yes, indeed, having access to that powerful anti white card after sideboarding Igor Gorbanov, choosing to bring it in. And he doesn't have the second red for the. He kept for the, for the Eidolon of uh, Eidolon of the Great Revel doesn't have the second red. No, uh, using a, a Temple of Silence there to give himself and black. Keeping for trouble. keeping a, a young Pyromancer to have a second uh, to have a play on turn two. All right, is he going to draw a mountain here? Oh, He's going to draw temple. a not, Temple of a Temple not as good, of, of Triumph. Not such a bad, not such a bad draw for him. That looked to be a skull crack from the very brief glimpse I saw of it. I may be wrong on that fact, though. So in his hand, he's got skull. He's got a, uh, a Boros charm already. In addition to the Eidolon of the Great Revel, what looks like a War Leader's Helix. Yeah. I think I would play a... Oops. Oh, it is in fact a skull oh, crack. So there I we have, go. Very kindly revealing it, not just to us, but to his opponent as well. I think I think I would keep it. He's he's like he has a lot of damage in his hand. Mm. Like this turn, like I think he should main main phase uh, Boris Charm here, and get paid from the. Uh, yeah. Get paid by the uh, by the young pyromancer, of course. Yeah. Not wanting really because to have if Dimitri that does not, if he doesn't have a play, then. Uh, and there's Brimaz. Uh, Dmitry Budakov uh, willing to take a two-point damage, uh, two-point uh, life payment from his Hallowed Found in order to have the Legendary Cat into the battlefield. It's going to be a lot of damage. 16, he's already on 12. 12, he's going to be on 9 this turn. So a Glare of Heresy taking care, exiling the Cat King. In come the Clowns. The uh, young Pyromancer and his uh, freshly summoned Elemental from last turn have also come in. So that's another three points off Dimitri's rather precarious life total. He's at nine life. Igor Gorbanov in his hand has Eidolon of the Great Revel, a War Leader's Helix. He in fact has two uh, Eidolons of the Great Phoenix, Revel and a Chandra's Phoenix. Supreme Verdict. Supreme right, Verdict. Take care of the Elementals. Care of those elementals. Is that a skull crack? No, is that that's a phoenix? It's a phoenix off the top. Okay, so, so seven life, seven life now, getting ever closer here. Igor Gorbanov to a, a, a semi-final berth in GP Moscow, but Dmitry Budakov shouldn't be counted out just yet. His mana has been developing at a uh, at a reasonable rate. He's got four lands in play. I think I would play the the Adelon main step. Skull crack on skull top. Crack on top. There I you think go. Play okay. Adelon main step. Adelon, Adelon in the main phase. Yeah. yeah. Nah. No, a second Phoenix. This one, this one could be countered. Yep. Yeah, there we go. A syncopate there. And the second Phoenix is going to be Azores Charm. So Dmitry Budakov gaining himself a little bit of time there. And Raf Levy, as you said, a uh, an Eidolon of the Great Revel would have been pretty good yeah. in that spot. Because he wouldn't have been able to resolve the... Uh, he wouldn't have been able to resolve the syncopate or, and the Azores Charm yeah, at the nothing same time. Would have, nothing would have worked. Mm. And also, if you know, if he wants to play the Azori Charm, he takes two damage. And that's that's which exactly, is which is right. huge here. Yeah. So it's another that's, dissipate. That's getting dissolved. Another dissolve, not dissipate. There. Dissolve, no, no. not dissipate. So an Eidolon of the Great Revel, not even hitting the battlefield, thanks to that dissolve there on what the part of the What happened to the Skullcrack? Was there a Skullcrack somewhere at some point? He had a Skullcrack. He has got a Skullcrack in oh, his is, hand. Is, oh, it's probably on top, right? It's on top. Is he, there we go. Yeah, he's yeah, just drawn it just now. It's crying from last turn. As Budakov now with four lands untapped and a, and a, uh, a Temple of Enlightenment. Here is another Eidolon of the Great Revel. How is so if, so Budakov if he wants to counter, to If he wants to counter the Skullcrack, he's going to take uh, two unless he plays Syncopate for three. Which would cut off any other two mana players on his turn this time. 
So Budikov hitting the tank about this, a really key decision here. It's an Azorius charm in response to draw right. a card. That that looks that looks very complicated here. So that's an island that he drew off the uh, off the Azorius charm, and there's an agate. If he taps out, if well. he taps out, he's dead. If he plays Elspeth here, he's dead. So Igor's play here is just to not do anything, right? Or play, play, play uh, an inst an instant yeah. skull crack? No, no, because you don't want to be a, uh, you don't want to face uh, like the only way Dimitri can come back is by playing a Sphinx Revelation. Sphinx Revelation, that's correct. So if he if he ever taps out, then he fires. This yeah, is architect. That's totally floor. fine. That's okay. Okay, so avoiding, of course, the pyrostatic pillar effect on the Eidolon of the Great Revel, punishing players for playing any spell that costs three or less. And of turn skullcrack. And of turn skullcrack from Gorbanov. And wall leader heal is gonna do it. Because syncopate for one is going to hit him for two. On the gate, that's two. That's the and same the gate thing. is going to hit him for two there. He has the one leader healing, and that's it. Response. So there we go. Dmitry Budakov, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for him, fist. he is out of the tournament this time. But well done indeed to him for making it all the way to the quarterfinals. It does also qualify him for the Pro Tour all the same. He's managed to pick up enough Pro Points to get himself there. So well done indeed. Congratulations to Dmitry Budakov. But congratulations to the pumped up Russian Igor Gorbanov. Look at him go, the big dog getting stuck in. Well and truly very happy with that result. Red White Burn finding itself all the way to the semis of GP Moscow, Raf Levy. I liked it. The whole time I liked the red, the red white burn. I like you've been saying this throughout uh, yeah. the weekend and now it doesn't change in the finals. I like now what I it does. Imagine you've, you're, a, you're a very happy man to see it at the top tables. So we have... Uh, so moving on now we do have Li Shi Chan from Hong Kong who's facing off against the Ukrainian Sergei Shuselsky and uh, it looks to be... Uh, it looks like here they are well into game two with the Desecration Demon being summoned on the side of Li Shi Chan, the world number 16. Oh, well, that was, that was quick. Uh, that is a very quick concession there from uh, Li Shi Chan. Not entirely sure. When it, we didn't get an enormous amount of time to look in on that one. So there's a very, very happy man indeed. That is the face of a gentleman who, is, who has made it all the way to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him and well done indeed to Li Shi Chan overcoming the odds to make it all the way to the top eight. A GP top eight. Going home with that, he can't complain. He was looking for one that. point. He got a top eight. I think he, uh, he was relieved when he made a top eight. Yeah. And the pressure kind of kind of goes down. Like He was qualified for the... Oh, no? What? What do you mean? Li Shi Tian is... Li Shi yeah, Chan Li. already qualified oh, yeah. for the... Uh, That's Li what Shi I... Chan yeah. already qualified for the... A quick interjection. We're just like, no, Li's not uh, qualified. Oh, a yes. A quick interjection yes, from, yes, yes. Uh, from our producer over here. But now we are back <laughs> with the action coming your way between... Uh, who have we got here? We have... Kieran. We have Kiran Chetty on the right facing off against Alexei Rogov from Russia. Now... I'm very, very happy to say that Karan Chetty all the way from the Southern Hemisphere, the right side of the equator. Well done indeed to him. He's found it, his way to the top eight. Is it 1-1? One, one? He is from South or Africa. Is it game two? And if we're not sure if this is a game two or game three. We'll find that out very shortly, of course. We did know. So it's the, game tour, three. the ties, uh, the score all tied up. It's 1-1 one, one between Alexei Rogov and Karan Chetty. You can see the decks they're playing there. Jund Monsters. That's up against Black Red Devotion. So we'll see how these two decks face off against each other as this match gets uh, unfolds further. So John Monster got one in the other match. Yes, John Monsters has overcome uh, the Mono Black Devotion of Li Shi Chan. So there's at least one copy of John Monsters going through to the semi finals. This match will determine whether there's a second. So there's no second red for the Dragon, no black for. Uh Ruska and Mizium Mortars, and he's 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 showing the top of his deck. So yeah, you know what this is? This is gonna be a, a, a black red dual land here. Uh, uh, blood Crip. A, 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 no, it is. Oh, a, almost, a, almost a, a, a blood. There, there you go. Very well. Very that, that's well what he dude. asked for. He's like, I need a red black. I need red a red black, black dual. land. And asked, and you shall receive. There is a Mizium Mortars to take care of that. Uh, of that zombie, which is then going to get gobbled up by the uh, scavenging ooze, and in they come. That's five points of That's damage. That's a lot of pressure, knowing that the scavenging ooze and the Elvish Mystic. Uh, Stormbreath Dragon is coming down next turn. Mm. So Karanchetti playing a black red jewel of his own here, 
1-1 the scores. So this one really coming down to the wire between these two, uh, these two players. Karanchetti on 13. Alexey Rogov, a bit of a buffer to his life total thanks to that scavenging ooze. He's on 22. So, plays a land, shakes like the, the turn. Alexey the Rogov South draws. African would say uh, it's looking kind of cag here. Is that, is that what yeah, he would say? Yeah. An expert on all yeah. things South African, Rafael <laughs> Levy. I know, I know that to be the case. But you'd have to say that Karan Chetty uh, facing a rather, yeah, a rather is, hard fight here. This is a CAC situation here. Definitely an uphill battle here for him to get through uh, to the uh, semi-finals. In any case, a Storm Breath Dragon slammed onto the battlefield here with Alexei Rogo. That's going to come across into the red zone and it's going to also eat a right, so he's going to be on, th on three. He's taking five off those uh, those cards there. Yeah. I think he's down to, to three. I think he's already taken the damage down yeah. to eight. Or no, he is down. He's down in fact to three. That's correct. The man with the knowledge, Rafael Levy. Levy Vision again coming yeah, into play. Seer. It's a Levy Seer. That's that's Levy Seer. That was my uh, my invitational card. So, what has Chetty got? Is there any tool? Are there any tools that he can uh, use yeah. to dig himself out of this? That's going to be. It's going to be a chum blocker. A he does have a Night Vale Spectre, a Night Vale like Spectre. Like the Ooze is going to attack, he's going to, everything's, no, but no, he has Vraska in hand. So, so Vraska is going to take can care. come down, there's the Vraska, yeah. that can blow up the, uh, the Night Vale Spectre. With access to just two mana, there's yeah, the extension of the hand in concession. So unfortunately for the Southern Hemisphere, no. our very final represent, representative is consigned to the baked hell it's an, of oh. the, uh, the tournament floor here. However, we do have Alexei Rogov, congratulations to him with a second copy of Jund Monsters finding its way to the top four. Alexei Rogov also flying off to the Pro Tour with that victory. Well done indeed to him. So, we have so far two Russians and a Ukrainian in the top four. And it's going to be a fourth Russian as well. Our final match between Efim Kashapov and Sergei Zheleznov. These guys facing off against each other. A four-color mid-range deck taking up taking uh, up arms against the boogeyman of the format, the Mono Black Devotion deck. They've just gone to 1-1. One, one. We're going to move them over to the uh, the feature match table wrap. So we're going to get a good look at these guys. There they are. They're yet to take their seat. You can see the pristine blood red oh, table Look at what's coming. Of the, uh, of the feature match area. And we're just in time for the doctor's appointment. Here is the <laughs> Flying Dutchman himself. What have you got for us, Frank? Well, I've just been watching uh, game two of uh, the match of which I'm sure you are about to say to see game three. Efim Kashapov and his uh, four color mid-range deck. He lost game one to uh, Sergei Zeleznov's mono black deck and all the pack reds. In game two, the tables were turned. I mean, Efim's deck has, has cards like Kiora, has cards like Elspeth, so it has a good late game, but it also has pack red of its own. So in game two, Efim actually made four pack reds and started attacking, and that was basically uh, good enough. And that's enough. With a four-color deck, you're going to have a wide array of threats from all the colors of the rainbow. So well done indeed here yeah. to uh, stabilizing at 1-1. One, one. So these guys moving over to our, uh, our feature match table to get stuck in. So thanks so, so much for that update, Frank. He'll be back with more news, I'm sure, before, two, uh, before very long. So now having a look at the deck lists for these two players here, for uh, FM Kashapov and, Sir, and Sergei Zheleznov. Here they are in front of me right now. So... Sergei Zheleznov playing a, uh, a, pretty, uh, a pretty boilerplate uh, stock standard um, mono uh, black devotion list here. He, d he is in fact uh, uh, splashing uh, green. Uh, sorry, not splashing green. He's playing green temples. However, amongst his 75, I don't see any green cards. Nope. So just moving on, mono black. Just mono black with the, uh, with the uh, rather traditional lineup here. Efim Kashapov on the other hand, other hand anything but a traditional lineup. He's black, white, green, blue deck, bringing the heat all the way to the quarterfinals here for him, and he's uh, they're facing off at one apiece. So looking at this, uh, looking at this list for Kashapov, he does have a lot of one ofs and two ofs. There's one Elspeth, one Obsidat, one Whip of Erebos, one uh, Pelucranos, one Voice of Resurgence, two Ashiok, uh, two Kiora, two Blood Baron, two Corset of Crufix, two Abrupt Decay, a Golga two Golgari Chum, two Underworld Connections, a real scattershot approach to deck building. FM Kashapov, obviously a man. Who, who likes good cards and couldn't decide which ones he didn't want to play. I like the Voice of Resurgence 
right next to Far and Away mm. on the deck list. Yeah, it really does, uh, really does go some way. In, uh, yeah, the, the deck list lit literally reads Ashiok, Far and Away, fair enough, you'd see those two cards in a deck together, and then after that, Voice of Resurgence at the polar opposite. Or opposite that, Coast Cancel and Cure the Crashing Wave. Exactly right, that's, two, that's, two yeah. cards that just well, go together, go together yeah. like milk and honey, absolutely right. So looking over now at FM's sideboard, obviously with access to the full four colours in his deck, he's going to have a range of sideboard options. We see one Erebos, one Deicide, one Pithing Needle, two Sin Collectors, two Ultimate Price, one extra Golgari Charm. I'm a big fan of the Golgari Charm coming in yeah, as, well, as well as being in the main. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the top five cards of the tournament. Absolutely, there you go. And also Unflinching Courage, three copies of that and three copies of the spiciest card on the planet. It is Notion Thief, Raph, uh, Raph Levy. Unfortunately, not an enormous beater in this matchup. The Notion Thief. Nah, not, uh, what, what can it do? It cannot do much, It can right? draw the cards off the Underworld Connections, yeah. but then your opponent can just choose to not yeah. activate their Underworld Connections. To not be uh, stupid. <laughs> you always do have that option when playing Magic. Not an option that all players uh, definitely take advantage of, Raph. Let, let, let that be said, but it is an option available to people. You can see on the camera or... Uh a friend uh, reporting from the our friend and match. colleague Olorada, yes, indeed. Hall of Famer Olorada, all the way from Sweden. Yes, there he is. If uh, you might recognise his face from his Invitational card, of course, um, which is which is I have forgotten. It is it is a green card. It's an elf. And Sylvan, I was, Sylvan, Sylvan something. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Ola. We didn't mean it. I shouldn't have opened the rabbit hole. You can also see the lower half of the uh, of the imposing figure of Stephen Leeming. Not for very much longer. Rich doesn't want us having uh, having anything more to do with that. So now these players are shuffling up, getting ready to deal themselves out their seven cards as uh, as the final match of the uh, the quarterfinals. As I'm sorry, the final game of the quarterfinals as it gets ready to be resolved here. Difficult to pick a uh, a huge favourite here between these two uh, these two decks. I mean, obviously the black deck proven it's a ped it's a pedigree here. I, I, time and time again. I don't know enough of the four color control. But the four color control deck, I mean, it does have access to Blood Baron of Viscopa, which is an absolute beating against the Mono Black deck, of course. It does have access to cards like Erebos, God of the Dead, which is going to uh, which is going to be a, a pretty important card against uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, of course. Um, and in addition to that, it's got four pack rats of its own, as as we heard from uh, the Flying Dutchman. So there may this uh, this uh, matchup may indeed pa prove to be more complicated. Pack rats and flinching courage. Packrats and unflinching courage. Don't mind if I do. Yes, indeed. So it's a safekeeper. It's a s <laughs> Sylvan safekeeper. Sylvan that's safekeeper. There we go. Oh, okay. And you just knew that off the top of your head. You definitely didn't look that up. On no, your phone. no, just, no. Definitely just knew. I actually it. played that card before. Did you really? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Well, uh, apologies once again to Olorada. Um but here we are now. These players taking their time. It must be said in uh, getting ready for game number three. Certainly getting themselves into their uh, their uh, zones and making sure that they're going to bring their absolute A game here because a Pro Tour qualification on the line for both of these players, of course, only qualifications being offered to the top four here due to the size of the event. So a lot at stake, fame, glory, and a flight to Pro Tour Cans of Tarkir, of course. So here we are now, these players are uh, op uh, having their opening cards, opening hands of uh, six cards each, or seven cards each. I don't think there's been a mulligan so far. Let's see what they've got. I saw all the colours of the rainbow for Ifim Kashapov over on the right-hand side of your screen. Ser Sergei Zheleznov uh, thinking about his cards. You can see both of these players seem satisfied with their seven. So here we are, we are underway with the final, ma the final game of the final match of the top eight of GP Moscow, leading with the Mutavolt. On uh, Zheleznov's side with Kashapov uh, opening up with an overgrown tomb. And we're gonna see what... Let's find out exactly what Kashapov ended up. Look at him, he's so, he's ready to all dump the cards on the table and uh, so as a result of that thought sees. This, so. this deck is all over the place. Breeding Pool, Elspeth, uh, there's an Elspeth, a Blood Baron of Viscopa. We have what looks to be an ultimate, ultimate price. price. That is an Erebos God of the Dead. Next underworld to that. Connection. And an Underworld Connections. And of course, a Breeding Pool also. Uh, uh, nudge between those two rather heavily black cards. I don't know how he, uh, he worked his mana base, but it must have been quite 
quite a teaser. Quite a strong one. Tell you what, he's, he's done all right. He's got all four colours in his hand and on the battlefield at the moment, so he's, he's not done too badly. So the thought is taking the ultimate price, you would think that uh, there'd be a, a quick follow-up of a, of a black creature that uh, would be threatened by that. Due to the thought is uh, taking it downtown into the graveyard. When you play against a deck with like one ofs and two ofs, mm. every time they play a card, you're like, oh, come on, you only have two of them. Mm. Oh, it's one such of a them. Beating. It's such a beating. Like, yeah, exactly. well, you got to have something, right? So there we see a, a tapped uh, godless shrine entering the battlefield, and here is oh, a he just, life uh, bane he drew the, zombie. So he's going to be his choice there. Oh, nice. Takes the courser, so he's still okay. got the uh, Blood Baron of Viscopi. You'd have to think that Zheleznov has a future answer to the Blood Baron, considering that he let uh, he, he didn't exile it. With the well, blood he didn't have zombie. lands to go with, uh, with the, mm. the Blood Baron. But Blood Baron being what it is, the quality of threat that it represents, sh surely demanding an answer from Serge uh, at some point. And there's a Hero's Downfall on top of a FM's deck. Yes, Kashapov leaving and a Hero's Downfall on top. You'd think that that's going to do a little bit of work based on the, uh, based on the creatures that uh, Zheleznov is able to dispatch. Here comes a Desecration Demon. Oh, there's another zombie. There's oh, another that? live... It's Erebos. It's Erebos, God of the Dead, excuse me. There's another live main zombie on top of, uh, in, uh, in Sergei's in hand. In Sergei's hand, okay. So he's waiting for the uh, opportune moment to strike here. Obviously, uh, uh, Kashapov not able to cast that, uh, cast that Blood Baron uh, for the next oh, two turns. Now he needs to keep the... The mana up for here is downfall, because otherwise uh, Sergei is going to play his other life main zombie and attack with Erebos and, and be able uh, to attack with a newly yeah. awakened Erebos. That's right. His devotion will be to f uh, at five at that point. So here comes the life main zombie. You'd think life yes, main zombie there number two. Take care of the of the um, the blood baron of his blood baron. He's Probably going to hit the exile zone at this point. You would think. Oh, I'm pretty sure it will. Well, there's no other legal targets for the ability, so it, it's definitely it's certainly going to. Off goes the hungry, hungry vampire into the exile zone, and remaining in uh, in Kashapov's hand, we have Elspeth still, uh, underworld connections, hero's downfall, and in addition to that, a, Take uh, zero. a fourth card. There's another land, another breeding pool to go with all of the uh, heavy black spells. Yeah, the, the next two turns are going to be crucial. Because if he doesn't find either the six land or a way to deal with, uh, he needs to deal with the life main zombie. Yeah, life main zombie. Because first. even Els Elspeth isn't going to be particularly good against yeah. the life main zombie. So there's the underworld connections. <laughs> Kashapov figuring out exactly which lands he wants to tap for it, uh, with the breeding pool still in hand. Uh, so there we go. That's going to draw him an extra card there. He's going to go down to 16 after that activation. Draw himself a card. Here comes another land. That's the breeding pool we were talking about uh, earlier. And he ships the turn. No, he, he, no, last turn he played a tapped land and play uh, Hero's Downfall. So he hasn't played an extra land this turn. No, of course not. So with Erebos God of the Dead, with backed up by a Lifebane Zombie, here's a Duress. Oh dear, an absolute, an absolute nightmare here. His Elspeth, Elspeth, Elspeth is going to be stripped from his hand. However, he does have the ultimate price, which will uh, handily answer the, uh, the Lifebane Zombie there. Lifebane Zombie coming in for another three points of damage. What, was it right here? Take the ultimate price and not the, El and, uh, the Elspeth, not the ultimate price? Depends just, what's in his hand. We see a devour flesh, yeah, but at yeah. least at least one, perhaps two. I guess so. I guess. Hey, oh, the salt and that's collector. A, that looks like a sin collector. Indeed, sin, yeah. sin collector. I so keep calling it salt collector. A sin collector coming down. What's that going to? Uh, what's that going to so take here's care of? So here's down for a pack rat. Here's down for double devour flesh and a pack rat. So he's got his choice between those three instants, the three black instant removal spells, oh. at the disposal of uh, of Kashapov. He I think here's down for is going to hit the bin. Certainly, here is downfall. The uh, the highest impact card. Oh. Actually, uh, let's see. However, he may want to draw his second. Uh, yeah, no, he has he has a no. Yeah, here is downfall. It's fine. Okay, here is downfall. Hitting the bin. Oh, sorry, hitting the exile zone with the uh, with the sin collector. Another pr oppressive uh, three cost, uh, one toughness creature that's able to strip cards out of your opponent's hand along with life pain zombie. Passes the turn back. He's got uh, open mana for an ultimate price. He's also able to draw an extra card off of his underworld connections as he ships the turn to Zheleznov, who untaps his permanence, draws a card. This turn is going to be able to kill the life pain zombie. 
The life band zombie, yes, will, can uh, can hit the dust. If, if Sergey does to not do does not kill the sim collector, he can just block because it's black. It is black indeed. Yes, yeah, so it's it, uh, not not scared, no fear. So there we go. So he's, he's chosen to kill the uh, sim collector. That's going to game uh, if in passion catch up one life. In comes the muta vault. In comes the life band zombie. Of course, ultimate price unable to kill the like the uh, the Mutable, Mutable, yeah. because it's not it's not a monocolored creature it's a colorless creature yeah. but you'd imagine here yeah, that, I don't uh, think I don't think there's a choice here the life band zombie is I think he needs to, to kill the, the zombie because if Sergey hits the uh, underworld connection then it's going to be the end of the world like uh, Erebus going to be uh Erebus going to be activate he's going to be uh, online awake awake wake woken up yes that's right from his deep slumber in the underworld and uh, then so he will have to play it anyway so, uh, so I don't think I don't think there's a a point to take three more damage here. Seems pretty he ha clear. He has to, to uh, play. He has to play what he has. Seems pretty clear to Hall of Famer Raf Levy. And if uh, if Raf Levy is the man with the knowledge, I, I might be wrong. I, I can always be wrong. You are capable of error. Oh yeah, you like, are capable oh, for sure, of error. For sure. But I think I think I would definitely kill the zombie here. It's too big of a threat. If he draws two blanks, then he can still come back in the game. But if he doesn't kill it, then he take he's taking an extra risk for something he's. Like three life is too important here. Yeah, with absolutely. connections, it's just way too important. Kashapov really hitting the tank about this. He, it's not an easy for decision for him to make, unfortunately. He's uh, he's having a real think about it, deciding whether he's he's going to take care of this. He uh, can also. I think I think what he's thinking of is uh, taking three just to draw end of turn. That's that's the real thing. Like that's that's the actual. Uh, he's not thinking about killing it or not killing it. He's about he's thinking about drawing or not drawing. No, certainly, yeah, no. He's decided and he's decided to draw a card, which that looked like another ultimate price. Yeah. So he's obviously boarded in his other two ultimate prices. So that's three ultimate prices uh, as a whole. So he's gone down to seven as a result of that. Uh, he drew. He also drew a good card here, a Sylvan Carrioted. Sylvan Carrioted. That's uh, going to be able to hold off the Mutavolt at least. But you'd think that uh, that life band zombie isn't long for this world. No, but he's going to be able to block the Mutal Vault. But that's seven life, that's... That's tough Passing against the turn it. as well, without playing the Sylvan carry out of it. Well, that, that, that's surprising. Oh, he wants to play around the... The Grey Merchant? There is a Devour Flesh in uh, Zelevnov's hand. Oh, that's right, but that's still, that would still be three life. I'd be happy with three life. So here's the ultimate price. There you go, as expected. It's bound to happen sooner or later. And here is a pack rat. Okay. Ugh. Not the spot that you want to be in necessarily. This, are we going to see an ultimate price on the pack rat? Forcing uh, Jeleznov to discard a card and pay an extra three mana there if he's wanting to make a copy of it. Discarding a pack rat as it happens. So we have a rat token there, a pat rat, pack rat token, and an extra card finding its way into Kashapov's hand thanks to his underworld connections. And lands. Just two lands off the top. And, uh, can I have a look at the top card of his library? It's an Abrupt, Abrupt Decay. Decay. That's not wow. a bad, that's not a bad that, that's card. That's really good. It's a pretty good card. And also, thanks to the Underworld connections, he He's can be call in a phone. Right Just away. one phone call. One phone call, mate, and he gets that <laughs> connection. There it is. An, up to, an Abrupt Decay finding its way Hello. into his hand. And you'd think that that would deal with the rat in, uh, in uh, no short uh, no short. Word. There is the Abrupt Decay. And there's the Sylvan Carryout at one turn later than we might have expected it to appear. He played land already. He's already played a land, he yes, of course, because he scried. So there, there he is, so uh, unable to put a second land into play there. As we see a Temple of Malady, that's going to let Zeleznov have a look at the top card of his library. Like FM's life is... Uh, is uh, precarious. Precarious. Yeah. Precarious is the. Uh, it's is on the word five there. life. All right, another. Uh. And that looks like another life bane zombie. Unfortunately, not. Uh, unfortunately for Zheleznov, he's not able to take that Erebus out of uh, his opponent's hand. But still, a respectable. Another. Plot. Oh, another underworld connection. Another underworld connections. <sighs> That's a tough one here. So here we oh, are, moving the nice. camera for your viewing pleasure, so we can see get a. He can actually play both and be on three. Is that yeah? I think that I think that it just needs. To oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't need. Extra yeah, cards. he doesn't need to take two from the from the land. He can just play the connection and he play, play Airboss. I think I think it's actually good. 
because if uh, because Erebus, of course, will have yeah. been awoken from his deep slumber. And then he has Sergei has only one card. Is it Devour Flesh? Sergei has. I think I don't think we've seen the second Devour Flesh played. So uh, that is indeed the case. I think I think he needs to do that. I think he needs to tap everything, like not draw this turn. Tap uh, maybe play the la the, the, the land tap doesn't matter. Mm. Just tap out, play connections and play Erebus, and he would have the devotion to make that make sure that's yeah. a five seven exactly. He's not going to need to rely on the uh, yeah. the Sylvan carry out to block when he's got a fi an indestructible. But oh, there's five a muta seven. there's a muta vault in the mix. There's a muta vault that's going to be able to pressure his life total, so he can either take two from the land or take two from the muta vault essentially. He's far from uh, far from. Uh, He's like, far from out, out of this. From, uh, yeah, yeah. No, from out of. Uh, like, oh, he's, he's far from out of the woods? Yeah, from okay. out of the woods. That's he's not quite out of the woods. No, he's very much the Jeremy Neiman of the uh, GP Moscow. He is still <laughs> into the woods. <laughs> yeah, does he have any other choice, though? His other choice is to take two from the land and, uh, and keep the, the character to block. But it doesn't matter because. He's still taking two. Yeah. So here comes the Erebus. It looks like he's made up his mind about yeah. that, or has he? No. I think there's no other play. There's the Erebus. No, he's still... Okay. There's the Erebus. Okay, there we go. Keeping us all guessing, Kashapov, until yep. the very last Clean. moment. That's how the battle for and the tap. Exactly. And there is the Underworld Connections targeting his uh, blue-black land there. So, all tapped out and nowhere to go. Let's find out <laughs> what happens here with says Sergei Zheleznov. Can he Joe thump Kart. this melon? Is he able to find a way like to he, what take does down he need his here? opponent? He needs uh, a lot of cards he can, he can draw here. An underworld connection, for example. Oh, that's, that's very good. Because now he's going to attack for three. Oh, what did he do? Oh, he had, to, he had to win right here. He missed the kill. Like, if he doesn't tap the mutable, he can attack with everything. Oh, because he can attack yeah, with the Erebus yeah, as well. Had, he had the win on the board. Oh, okay, he missed yes. the kill. So if he played that Underworld Connections, left his uh, 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 Mutavolt untapped, yeah. he could have tapped the the remaining land to activate the Mutavolt yeah. and attack for uh, for, for 5, for 8, 10. Yeah. With, of only, with only two blockers, Ifim Kashapov could have uh, been denied his uh, this turn here. So, Zheleznov missing an onboard kill. There's a whip of Erebus, a whip of Erebus oh, is that, on the top is of it, is his it, library. Is that real? That is a. Is that real? Is, is that, it real? Is that, is I it think it's real? a real card. I think it is a real card. It, I mean, it seems to be a whip of Erebus. If that's a whip of Erebus, then I mean, he's. So he's going to pay one life, go to oh, one. Wow. That is a whip of Erebus. It is indeed a whip of Erebus. So that's going to give his creatures <gasps> lifelink. It's also going to oh. allow him to access cards, creatures in his graveyard. Oh he what seems happened? to have... Oh, he's, has he tapped the wrong lands? He still seems to have access to double black. I'm not exactly sure what, what he's upset about. Oh, no. Oh, he's not winning life because there's Erebus. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's oh. right. The players, well, <laughs> even though they have lifelink, he can't gain he any like, life oh. off them. Yeah, so there we go. So unfortunately for him, uh, it's not going to quite be enough. Erebus's secret hidden mode that everyone seems to forget. Players, uh, sorry, opponents can't game life. And seeing as both players have an Erebus, it's a very even playing field. Hopefully. He was like, oh, yes, yes. Uh, I've got like, a oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, dear. So, unfortunately, assembling the combo of Erebus and his whip, not quite enough to dig uh, uh, Kashapov out of this hole. He does not have the mana available for an activation either. He only has three mana available. And seeing that he's at one life, a precarious position indeed for him. But there was nothing else he could do anyway. Well, I mean, he could have scribed that card to the bottom and then hoped to rip another card oh, that's off right, the that's top. Right, that's right. But even then, like, what are the cards that get him out of this situation? Yeah, he cannot survive this, this turn. So devour there's a devour flesh. Devour flesh. flesh. A devour flesh is going to put him up to four, and here comes an attack for five. Yeah. Oh. I don't think there's any way. Of, oh, of course, he didn't gain any life once again, even after discussing it. Uh, so yeah, well they... done indeed to Zhilezhnov. Yeah. Sergei Zhilezhnov has found his way into the semi-finals, and <laughs> even after explicitly discussing the can't gain life effect, the devour flesh did not gain him any life because oh, yeah. of the Erebus. <laughs> so there we go. We've forgotten it. Even the best of us forget us. Forget it, uh, as, 